Hello there everyone, this is ShadowGear655 here, doing a review of Onua and... I forget the name of the mole. Damn it, I forgot the name of the mole! Hold on. <clears throat> Tarak. His name is Tarak. I should know this, I didn't, unfortunately. But, yeah. I really friggin' love these two, a lot. And I love... Onua 2015 was my favorite Toa of the last wave, and... Onua has competition this time, but overall as a package, these two are so freaking good! Anyway, I will state for the record that you can buy these guys separately. They don't come together like Kopaka, but I am reviewing them together. Just for the sake of their combination, for the sake of convenience, I don't know. But let's start with Terak. Terak to me, it's adorable. I love this little guy. And yes, he, he's a variation of, of Melum. You know, he has the same type of like kind of short legs, long arms, kind of weird looking head that Melum does, but I feel like he, this guy, you know, does it so much better because this guy's a mole and you can buy this guy looking like a mole, especially with the head. I feel like it's a very bird-like head, but you can also take a look at it as like, you know, kind of like this kind of, kind of needle nose, kind of like a low to the ground like head. Like I, I like, I do like that. I like that his legs are longer. Oh. Fuck, let's get out of the way. I love all the trans purple on this guy. Oh my god, there's so much good trans purple. Having these these um, Hero Factory, Knife Factory, CCBS shells. Sorry. In the size 2, size 1s and trans purple, that's awesome. These purple claw pieces. Holy shit, I love these pieces. And this guy comes with 10 of them! 10 of them! I don't know what to do with 10 of them, but I'm happy I have them. And... When this guy goes on clearance, or maybe not, I want to get more of him. In terms of... Hmm. Well, Akita... Akita may have a run for his money. But this guy definitely has some really good parts in him. Like, super good parts. I love the gold. I like, again, this kind of jeweled piece. And one thing I really like about it is that... And I thought this was weird when I first got it. Is that this piece is not... In trans purple, it doesn't fade out to trans purple, it's trans clear. So, like, this is a really rad piece to use for, you know, a, a mock that doesn't have trans purple in it, but you still want to use this gold piece. And I think that's great. I, I love that a lot. I also like the fact that Tarek has little horns. Like, you can push them up like this and give them, like, these cute little ears, or you can just kind of push them back and make them forgettable. I kind of like pushing them back because I think it looks fine the way it is. And generally, um, I think the gimmick is really cool, too. I mean, it's the opposite of Melum's. So instead of having them going in and out, his go up and down. And I think that's a cool, like, it's like a digging effect. Like, it's similar to, like, Onua's original gimmick if his arms only went one way as opposed to the opposite directions. But I like this. He's just, I can imagine him holding giant boulders in his hands and you going, Chua! and then boulders go flying to the sky. And all, and that's really cool. I, I like Tarek. A lot. I probably should also mention the little trap dude he comes with, and I feel like this one and the one that comes with Akita, the, the creature of water, are the best ones, I think. These guys have the best parts that come with them. These little, like, unicorn horn drill pieces. I love those pieces. I'm happy he comes with four of them. These new clip-on pieces. I love having those. I'm more please. And, again, the gimmick, you just push this down. Oh, no, I'm trapped. And then this guy can just be like, oh, whoo. I do like that on some of the creatures, you can take their little vestigial bits like this and kind of... This one, like, they just push them up. So then this guy's literally just a, just a bear trap. And just go... Oh no, I'm trapped! <laughs> so, like, day one, you know, January 1st, the day these sets first come out in the LEGO store, myself as well as Alira, Molly, my fiancé, we went to the Lego store, and we're staring at the shelves, and we're like, okay, we're definitely getting Umarak, she's definitely getting Gali, I'm definitely getting, um, getting the, the mole, she's getting the mole, and we're staring at the shelves, and I'm like, I don't know if Bahatu's gonna be bad. She's like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I don't, I think he's gonna be a bad set. But I bought him. And he turned out to be really good. Like, he's not amazing, but there, there's, there are some bits about him that I thought I would hate, and I ended up loving. And, man, I think combination with him and Tarak is great, but we'll get to that later. So, starting off from the ground, from the bottom up, as I usually do, I think the legs up on oh, no! definitely differ enough from the other Toa to make them stand out, but there are, are some bits to him. It's the feet. It's really just the feet. 
I don't mind these pieces. In fact, I like these kind of like mecha inspired kind of like, you know, clawed feet. The issue is that why are they still in gunmetal? Like it's partly okay because there's some gunmetal in his waist and it kind of matches up with the silver, but I don't know. I just, I really wish these pieces came out in other colors like maybe black or silver even. I would love it, but unfortunately nothing. But I think those are great feet to have for Onua. I, I think they look great. The lower legs, nothing really particularly special going on with them. You can pull off this crystal piece and show that there is the size three shell there. Also, this piece here, this size of Hero Factory in this color, I, I love that. That's fantastic. The instructions do tell you to put a pin on the back of it, and for the life of me, I don't understand why. But that's whatever. So, like on Kopaka, like on Umarak, you do have storage for the studs. And the thing that's particularly special about these studs is that they're trans purple! Friggin' remember like a year ago when I said the weirdest issue of it all is that all the protectors have translucent studs for missiles. But the Earth Protector doesn't. He has solid purple. And, I mean, you know, it's okay. I mean, it's nitpicking, but you know, it's because Lego didn't make trans purple studs, you fucking monster! Well, now you get them. You get 12 of them. And they're supposed to go in his blaster for his weapon. I decide, nah, man, fuck that. Because I had them in the blaster and I kept losing them. And I'm like, these are such good, somewhat rare pieces. I don't want to lose these. So I just put all 12 of them here on the little spindle. Kind of like the fact this thing spins. I think that's cool. But yeah, super awesome that he comes with that, with those trans purple ones. So like, if you're, if you're updating Korgot, for example, you can change out the studs on her to make them trans purple and then everything works out a little bit better. I don't know. Then the upper legs, I think they're perfectly fine. There's nothing particularly special with them. Uh, I do like, and in, in, um, Tahu does this as well. I like that they carry over some of the um, the gold armor here. I, I like the fact they keep that. That's really good. I think it's a good way to transition from the older versions to the newer versions, but keeping some parts of them in there. I think that's rad. Another thing I love about Onua is, well, well, all the most of the Toa anyway, not Bahatu at least. I love the printings on here. Well, actually, I like the printings on Bahatu too. Anyway, watch Bahatu review. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I love the printing on here. I like kind of like, like the cubist kind of design on here, like the weird like staircase and all the different like angular shapes. That looks great on the abdomen here too. I think that looks really all, really all right. Um, the gold is a minor different shade than the gold that's on the toy, but who kind of cares? I only mentioned it because I just noticed it now. And I like the piece. It also probably should mention how Nua's torso was built as well. I think it's a bit interesting. Um, it's nothing too different from the other Toa, but the fact that he has these these angular um, little Technic bits to have some Bora guys here to fill in some gaps, I think that's fine. I think that's cool. It does look a little bit weird from the back, but eh. Whatever. It's fine, man. Something I forgot to mention was the gimmick of him swimming his hammer thing back and forth. And I feel like I don't need to show this because it's obvious and I don't even care for the gimmick all that much, but... Oh, actually, this one's pretty smooth. This one's... this one's okay. I, I, I think that's alright. I don't know. It's alright, man. It's okay. So one of the reasons why I didn't think I'd like, um, not Bahatu, what am I talking about? One of the reasons I don't, didn't think I'd like Onua all that much is because of the shoulder pads. Because I thought these were at like a set angle. Like you weren't able to pose them at all and they were always stuck in this weird, awkward, kind of like weird inverse A stance. But no, you can totally pose this. They're on, you know, CCBS joints. So you can make these like giant purple lobsters friggin' eat his head. Or you can make them kind of like flatline shoulder pads like this. And like if you move his arms in a particular way, like you can adjust the shoulder pads to cover up certain gaps or whatever. And that's super cool. And it works even better when you combine them with Takar. And I'll show that when I get to it. But I really thought I'd hate these pieces of shoulder pads. And I love them. They're great. One thing that's a bit confusing about Onua though is his arms. So his arms are an interesting case. Um, they're both pretty much identical in build, for the exception of 
the upper arms because this is a normal I would call them like a hinge CCBS joint where the arm can only move in and out this one has the ball joint at the end so his arm can move kind of inward for like an arm cross pose just kind of go go all around this one can only bend that's super weird to me like I don't understand why like is it well it may be because he's holding a giant hammer here and maybe this joint is a bit more stable than using the other one I mean, in that regard, I guess it makes sense, but it still looks super weird. Like, I wish they even could recover this into trans purple. Oh, wait, they did already on Korgot. So, meh, I don't know, man. Onua's weapon, I can kind of take it or leave it. I think it looks fine. I, I like the giant drill hammer motif. One thing I don't like is that the fact this can swivel and it kind of loses its balance. I mean, it looks good on the shelf, but if you're playing with it, I can probably get knocked out of place. Uh,. One minor thing to- also, I like the fact that if you want to use the blaster on the back, you can just spin the drill, and it does that. That's cool. So, something to notice is that this is the older style of launcher with the yellow um, little gear in the middle, and then this one being dark gray. It's actually black and light gray for this. I used this on another set, take a guess through. Oh, I used it in a mock, rather, and I forgot to switch it out, but just to let you know, this launcher piece does come in black, and in light gray, just like an Umarak. So, yeah. Also, I, I like the fact the blaster here is kind of hidden. Like, I would like this weapon a lot more if this... If the head just didn't swivel all that much. And you can combine it into the other hand. I don't know. I don't like this weapon all that much, especially in comparison to Onua in 2015. His weapons, like, he had the claw hands, and he had the hammer that was optional, and able to store on his back. Like, I thought that was super cool. But, I don't know. I... I like that one better, man. Onua's new mask, I don't like all that much. Like, this looks to me too much like a weird pseudo-football player-like thing. And there's not even that much of that weird spiky silver stuff on his mask. It's just the general design doesn't look all that great to me. Again, it's one of those things where it's like, from the Mata to the Nuva, some masks get better, some masks get worse. And I do think this is... this is. I like the older one better. I think it works as a better mask, a better piece. I don't know. I think it looks fine. Although, however, if you switch out the mask for the gold version, I think it looks a bit better because it looks a bit more cohesive. You can actually make out his eyes in here just a little bit better and get some more detail out of that. And the gold and purple makes it makes him look a bit cooler. I like the way that looks. However, he's wearing his gold mask, so he probably should combine with his creature. So let's get to that. And here is Onua, Uniter of Earth. Man, this guy looks super cool. I'm gonna disengage his hammer here just so we can make his arms a bit more, a bit more even. So the combination with him and Takar, I think just really give him bigger shoulder pads, just like Kopaka, just like a lot of the other creatures. But there's something uniquely different about him. I mean, on the back, it's, it's a mess like the other ones and you know his neck is posable back here so his head can move with the toa head and that's great and all but the way this moves in the way this blends i like the way that looks quite a bit and also i like the fact that you can pose onua's shoulders so what i personally like to do is that i like to sweep these forward and do that oh no battery <clears throat> here's a tip for me and you kids make sure your fancy dslr cameras don't overheat under hot lights Anyway, yeah, I like that I can sweep the shoulders forward, bring the claws forward, and kind of latch them in to here. And that gives him such a, like, a really cool look. I mean, yes, Onua is still wearing a really silly hat, but at least the hat blends into his mask. So it looks a little bit better. I kind of wish he had claws. I think that would look a little bit cooler. I don't know, but generally, I think Onua came out great in this wave. And his interpretation, too, because he's not... Doesn't seem like a massive idiot. He, he's actually, like, the most Toa-ass Toa in the Journey to One, if you have Netflix and want to watch that. Like, I love Onua. And I've always loved Onua. Except for the Mystica version. 
or no, yeah, it was Mystica. Onu was cool. And I, I just like both iterations of the G2 version of them. And when we inevitably get a third one, I hope it's just as good. Anyway, yeah, this has been Shadow Gear 655 here, and I hope you all enjoyed the review. See you folks another time. <coughs> oh, I can taste those burritos. <coughs> but keeping some parts of them in there. I think that's rad. Now, if you excuse me, I gotta poop. I'm gonna keep this. Co I'm gonna keep this going. <clears throat> Can't get you on. Oh, I did it. Oh shit! I forgot to show the torso. I mean gimmick. Shit. <clears throat> oh. Looks like my camera's overheating. Oh, I forget it does that. Well, I'll be right back.